Do you want soundboard? Uh, I think the stand up to go turn it on. I think we'll be fine. I think we can deal without it this week. Yeah. It might actually work if you just hit the button. Nope. Yeah, I, no. I get that. Whatever. Uh, much like our lives, it just kind of pisses me off. It hurts me on the inside. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 235 of the CamCast. <laughs> the goal is to make you laugh every single time you say that. Oh, you do a good job at it, Zach. <laughs> I still have my favorite is maintain eye contact. Maintain eye contact. Look at me. Look, Look at, at me. me. Uh, oh, poor Dave. Jesus. God. Anyway, I am Mike, dear leader, doc taste, leader of men, herder of cats, maker of pizza, wearer of jeans, so on and so forth. And I am joined, as always, to my right by the one, the only, your mine, our uncle radical, the professor of the ghetto arts, mm-hmm. tenured but not licensed. Except in the state of North Dakota. That a boy. Getting saluted for reasons I can't quite understand. I, I don't even know. Yeah, whatever. Somebody calls him daddy, but uh, that person ain't here right now. <laughs> we call him Scoots. Got you. <laughs> well, don't worry. Uh, I made my girlfriend like be on a podcast, and she hates podcasts. So, okay. Yep. Uh, anyway, it's Dave Raleigh. Ahoy, ahoy. Indeed. <laughs> and sitting at the end of the table, saluting Dave for reasons I can't quite understand. I mean, you got nothing for me? Just going to stare? Okay, cool. <laughs> What Just you, shake your head and you stare. Want, I mean, you shake want, your head. I don't know. Maybe some some stare. semblance of explanation. Oh, fuck! I don't even know what I do most of the time. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, it is the chairman of the boards, the lord of the boards, the good Colonel Eddie Dean himself, Zach Lords. I wonder how I'll look back on this with shame, like we all will. That sounds That's about depressing. Right. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, anyway, follow us on all the social medias. We are at Cam Automag on the lot of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have not already, please subscribe to this podcast wherever you get it. It is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. Like, rate, review, subscribe, share it with your friends. Friends make everything better. No, they don't. Okay. No. <laughs> going to go on to something else, but, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash CamAutomag is where you go to help us keep creating fun content. Uh, you can subscribe at any dollar amount from $1 up to fifteen grand. Uh, if you're going to do the fifteen grand, kind of let us know ahead of time, and uh, we'll go ahead and print up a t-shirt that says, I ran Cam Automag for a month, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt and a bunch of hate mail. Yes, please. Yep. Uh, but the best bang for your buck is going to be at the $5 level because... That gets you not only a warm, fuzzy feeling in the cockles of your heart. Maybe even the subcockle area. Exactly. Just total cocular warm fuzzies. <laughs> uh, it also gets you access to the Cam Super Secret Shenanigans shitposting Facebook group, mm-hmm. where usually we ask you about food when we talk about the podcast, because, listen, we're cozy boys. It's what we know. It's what yeah. we do best. Duh. Yeah. Uh, also gets you uh, early access to the podcast. Uh, other bonus content, and uh, yeah, hell, we might even give special stuff away to the patrons. I mean, I feel like we them. should. We think, for them. I think we'll, I think we'll probably do that coming up here in a little bit. Uh, also, once we hit a uh, our two hundred dollar a month subscriber goal on Patreon, we're going to start live streaming the podcast recording. Or I mean, you know, as close as we feel like we should probably get. Listen, I think I think we're hanging out at like one hundred and fifty three dollars. I think if we get that to like. The next five, like 155 bucks. Okay. We'll call it good. All right. Or, maybe, maybe we'll just entice you guys. We'll just do it anyway, and then we'll just give you one episode. Yeah. And we'll let you decide for yourself if it's going to be worth the five bucks just to watch us be idiots. <laughs> do we live or do we die? The choice is in your hand. If you die, you to watch me dies. do this. God, nobody wants to see you do that. I want to see you do that. And you guys will even know what it is until... I don't give a fuck about your nipples. I can see you watch rub your nipples all day. Uh, now I feel uncomfortable. As you Good. should. That was fucking terrible. I like eye contact, too, while I do it. Please don't. Hey, so can I shout someone out because I'll forget about it if I don't do it right now? Um, 
can I rifle off some birthdays real quick? There's only like two. Ah, birthday's fine. It's only two. Shout out to a uh, happy birthday to Eric Smart and Ryan Lott. Oh, good for them. Yeah, there we go. You happy now? I We're done. So. What bullshit are you about to spout off? Don't you fucking dare. <laughs> you flinched, though. Uh, I want to shout out that random ass dude in the SC who I totally forgot your name. Thanks for seeing me at Tenors and giving me a good old hello. Perfect. Is that awkward or not? It was real awkward. Cool. Hey, Great. can I tell a story or two? Please tell a story. Oh, you tell a story shit. and then we got to get into some, some serious housekeeping. Okay, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll tell my, my longer story and we can tell the, the second smaller one later. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Dave. Yo. And Mike. Yes. Okay. I don't even know where to start with this. So we all love our best friend, Brand Conkey, right? Yes. International Man of Mystery, yeah. Yeah. So this whole, whole this fucking revolves around him for somehow. It's almost all his fault, too, but that's a story for later. Um, so I, I first see him on Saturday morning, showing up in his Supra at Cars and Coffee. And, of course, everyone's like, is that a Supra? Is that a Supra? And I'm like, is that Brandon? So I, I, got, I got a ride in that, and that was pretty fucking cool. So then, so I don't condone doing illegal car stuff. I don't condone most of the shit that I do. <laughs> I don't even condone who I am. So, you know, there's that as well. Damn. But. Does it just get cold in here, or is it just yeah. me? It's all the shade. So, um, wow. Yeah, so I did some dumb things. As so ones want to do. My, my Subaru, my flat six Subaru is up and running, and it's running actually really strong right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I decided it's time to start put, uh, making a kill list. And so... Uh, what first, are you attempting to kill besides the transmission? I have a, well, the clutch. The clutch is getting there. Um, so I had lined up a race with my buddy in his uh, Fiesta ST. Okay. Uh, I make about 20 more horsepower than I, I do, but he weighs, like, a lot less than do. And I actually got my car cat scaled because, like, yeah. Dave, want to take a guess how much my car weighs? Twenty-seven ninety-six. Twenty-seven. I was guessing. Like, I, I I guess twenty-nine. It came in with without me in it, but with about half a gas was at it with thirty-two. Oh wow! Okay, it's yeah. a lot heavier than I thought. Yeah, same. I, I thought they were lighter cars. Uh, uh stock. They're um, I like dry. I think they, they think they're thirty-one. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and then the bigger engine. Okay. Gas in it. Okay. Um. So we, we we planned out this racing spot we were going to go to. It was like kind of out of the way from everybody else because like, we didn't want to get caught up in all the, the random racing bullshit. Like, yeah. We just want to go do a couple runs and call it a night. Yeah, you didn't want to get caught up in Mexico, so you went to yeah. Mexico. Yeah, we went to Mexico. Yeah. We went to Little Tijuana where we went, actually. Um, and so <laughs> Little <it's>, Tijuana. Yep. <laughs> so I sh- it's me, my buddy Derek, and his uh, – you, you saw Derek in his uh, Subaru, the, the weird-looking one. The flat gray one next to parked next to mine. Yes. Yeah. Him. Yes, yes, T. We're all pulling in, and I watch a blue A90 Supra pulling right behind us. And I'm God like, damn it. Like, what the fuck? And it's like 1130 at night. We're on like this random ass back road, and there's a Supra following us. So it's, of course, Brandon McConkey. Who else would it be? I know, right? He's like, oh, I just saw you guys. What are you guys doing? What the fuck do you think we're doing, Brandon? We're racing. Doing hood rat shit. So um, he's like, oh, okay, well, I'll film it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, thank you. God heaven. So we, we, we line up the um, the ST and the Subaru, and who do you think won? Ooh, was it you? It was me. Holy shit. By a fuckload. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> By like three cars at 60. Did you take him to Gapplebee's? I, I was handing out meal tickets to Gapplebee's. <laughs> and we, we did like... We did like <laughs> Hit four, up the unlimited Gapitizers? Yeah, we did like four or five races. And like, just so like I could let him try different things and like have opportunities to like see his improvement level. And then I had like my, my second to last race, I had my launch perfect and the car bogged. Like, <laughs> the, 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 the back end just squad so hard. And I get about halfway down the track and I realized my e-brake was up. <laughs> Just grabbing all that e-brake for nothing. Yeah, it's like a four and a half k launch at that. Then, Jesus, this is where it sort of, sort of gets interesting. Like your just rattle canned white shit box of a eg a coupe just shows up, <laughs> and it sounded like it sounded na. Yeah. So, Mike, do you guys want to race? And their English was poor at best. <laughs> 
Um, so they, 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 they're like, they're like, uh, sure. And I'm like, it's just, just a stock legacy, just a stock legacy. So like, yeah, sure. It's race. So they, they pulled up next to me and I, I get a really good launch and I'm trying to pull on them. And I start hearing turbo sounds behind me and I see in my rear view mirror, his intercooler. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh he's going to hit boost and pass me. I kept pulling and pulling and pulling. So we came back. Uh, he didn't want to race again. He, he, he was smoking some both, uh, some coolant and some oil. It was blowing everywhere. <laughs> As every garage turbo Honda does at some yeah. point in its life. I didn't have that Even car... some professionally built ones. I, I, I feel like if that one was, was tuned any better than it actually was, it actually might have been a good race. But So then some the muscle cars show up from over from uh, Western because it just got busted. And as they show up, um, a white vehicle is coming down the main road. We get we, 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 with the blues and blues and berries, and berries and cherries, berries and cherries, berries and cherries on us. Yeah, berries and cherries, blues and twos, blues and twos. So the muscle cars just showed up from that Western. They just blow past him, almost hitting the guy, <laughs> and he's out of his car with a body cam grabbing plates as they drive by. And I'm like, That's neat, smart. I'm gonna stand by my car now. There so, you go. Worst thing you can do is run. Yep. And so then I see him stop my buddy Derek to get his plate and his information, and I realize he's checking everyone's plates. My car is insured, but I got running like a couple hours before that. So not registered. Has a plate, but not registered. Oh, boy. So he, he goes to the, the Fiesta, then the Subaru, and then goes to Brandon. Looks, looks where the plate is. No plate. Looks in the rear, rear window. A Virginia tag, eh? You're from Virginia? He goes, no, Utah. Well, I need to see your driver's license. All right, well, here you go. Why do you got Virginia plates on that? I bought Virginia. Well, you live here in Utah, don't you? He goes, yeah. Well, why have Virginia plates on it? Because I just bought it in Virginia. Like, they did this like three or four times. Because I just, the cop was not understanding the I just bought it part. Yeah. All he was hearing was bought in Virginia. Yeah. And like, it was a dealership issued temp tag. Like, yeah. you, you, you couldn't get a Utah one. Like, there's no fucking way that would have happened. Yeah. And so uh, the, the cop just kept giving him more and more shit. And the cop finally goes, this is where fucking Brandon McConkie's awesome. He goes, well, if, if I see you out here again, I'm going to impound your vehicle. And he goes, Brandon goes, for what? And then just drives away. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. So but as he's driving away, the cop walks over to me, shines his light at the back of my car, sees the 18 and goes, holy shit. Shines his light inside of my car and goes, what the fuck is this? <laughs> We've been asking that for years now. And he goes, back into the car, hands on your car. And, and I'm like, this is going to be a very <laughs> interesting night. And he walks over to the Honda. Our four hombres did not have uh, driver's licenses. You don't say. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Hmm. So, um, I, so I'm now like trying to, because I had my, my car insured like about 12 hours before this. <laughs> And so I don't have any paperwork. I have no nothing. And so like, I'm like trying to check my email. And it's like 11 o'clock at night. And my guy's probably asleep. And he goes, he goes, where's your insurance? I'm like, I have a text to a random guy with my VIN number on it. You're not going to believe. And he goes, hell no. <laughs> Walks away. So I, I walked out I, after about an hour of me leaning against my cold ass car. I got a just a uh, ticket for uh, failure to or expired registration is all it was. Nice. And then as I'm leaving, I blow a serpentine belt. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, this definitely is a Zach story. Yeah. This is Zach as shit. Yeah. So that was that was my. You know. Yeah. So like like on the side of the road, like I, I think it was like ten forty five. The nearest auto zone is ten minutes away. So we're like we're, we're we're racing to get there before they close. I get there by the the. So rolled the one they had and put my, put my belt on in the middle of the parking lot. And Met a boy. Mexico. So that's my story. Well, there you not, go. Not a great one, but I had Brian McConkey, so it has something. <laughs> wasn't a great one, but it was kind of a long one, so that makes up for it. Uh, no, it went it went places. It went to Mexico and also to Mexico. And in Mexico, in Tijuana, a little Tijuana. Yep. And we saw Brandon McConkey. <laughs> Brandon McConkey trying to explain the concept of just buying a car. Well, the, the, the best part too is that he messages uh, he messages my friend. I don't even know how that happened. He messages one of my friends, and it was like, "Hey, I'm going home to grab a trailer because it looks like Zach needs to get a car out of the impound tonight." And I was like, "Aw, thank you." 
What a guy. Yeah. We don't deserve him. We what really don't. Guy. And like my friends were like freaking the fuck out. Like, there's a fucking soup break here. And I'm like, yeah, ask him if he'll take you for a ride in it. <laughs> right? Like, no, really, he's cool. Yeah, he's like, he's approachable. <laughs> yeah. And like, uh, like, he like, got videos of my car and shit. And he's like, oh, try launching it like this. Oh, he was a good guy. Nice. Yeah. Well, we do have some very uh, big news to get to real quick. But first. No. This is before that. No. Oh. This is not this is not this news. Oh, this is, oh, oh I'm yeah. fucking dumb. It's all right. It's fine. Uh, so, uh, first off, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who read that story that I posted uh, last week and reached out to me. Uh, mm-hmm. really means a lot. We're here for you. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was uh, good to know that I'm not kind of going through these sorts of things alone. And, uh, yeah, if you're going through some of those things, you know, we're here. We'll listen. That's really kind of what it's about. You're right. Yeah. I mean, be, not even just as as a result of this podcast, but people no. talk to me on a daily basis, you know, as, yeah. as kind of a the shoulder to to confide upon, you know. Yeah. Like, and that's cool. I'm all right with that. Yeah. Because, you know, my life ain't all peachy either, so. Yeah, it's just one of those, like, you know, we're here, we're, you know, like, we will listen, much like a lot of you guys have said that you will, you know, listen to me. So I greatly appreciate that. Um but also to that end, um, next starting next week, we are going to be dropping down to one episode a week. It's going to be a little bit longer. It's, That's okay. We're kind of going back to our roots on this one. Yeah, we originally had the longer episode. We we had like episodes that really needed an intermission. Is what we need. Is what we had. You're right. You're right. Now we have structure, and we have a little bit more thought and. You know, yeah. I guess self regulation. Yeah. So, um, do we self regulate? Sort of. Uh, anyway, so. Um, Believe it or not. Yeah. So, I mean, we're recording this. It is, you know, 10 after 9 as we are recording this. So, I'm probably going to be up till, you know, 11, 11 30. And then I've got another, I have a day of work ahead of me. Right. And so, um, yeah, I love doing the two episodes a week, but, you know, so I don't get super burned out on this and then just have released like a two minute long episode where I say, fuck this, I'm done. Right. We don't want to do yeah, that. No. So yeah, we're just going to go down to one episode, one episode a week. It's going to be 70 to 90 minutes long. You know. Right. It's going to be, you know, we're going to talk news and shenanigans or if we have a guest, it's going to be really guest centric, you know. Sure. Try to get you guys involved and all that stuff. Or if it's, you know, one of our uh, returning champions like Joey or, you know, whomever. Um, yeah. For all. Possibly more horrifying fan fiction. <laughs> hey, I'm still scarred. I mean, the, all of these are definitely options. Also, you know, if you guys have any suggestions on how, you know, we could make this more enjoyable for you. If there's something that you feel is severely lacking from Cam yeah. Auto Mag's podcasts, let us know. As yeah. we said before. We're always here to listen. Yeah, we're always here to listen, but if, I mean... We might tell you in a roundabout way that we think that's, you know, well, an asinine suggestion, and that's well, you know, I'm just board, gonna, borderline mockery, but that's beside the point. I hear that all the time, so it should be pretty easy to take for our... Yeah, well, I'm just going to go ahead and say if anybody's just like, no, keep doing two episodes, and I'm going to say, cool, somebody come here and help me edit this shit. Right, exactly. Because, like, that's kind of what is killing me. Right, right. So, we want to we want to make the burden, you know, a little bit less. Yeah. Um, because we do this out of, you know, passion and interest. And when you neuter passion and interest for the sake of production. Yeah. Like th- things kind of well, it was like, take a sour turn. You know, it was like I was talking about on, you know, in that story. It's like I feel obligated and, you know, it's not fun. And when it's not fun, you can tell. So, right, exactly. Yeah. So we're not, you know, yeah, you're like, not putting your heart and soul into it, or it's, no. or it's a chore, and we don't, we don't want to do that. No, we definitely don't want to do that. So yeah, so uh, yeah, next week, uh, episode two thirty seven is going to be coming out on Wednesday. It's going to be a little bit longer, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're going to play with the structure. We're gonna we're gonna make it awesome, guys. Yeah, like we're gonna make we're gonna make this work Let's because make Cam great again. That's not. We were never great. We're never aspiring to greatness. We were just aspiring to not suck. Let's make Cam not that suck more. <laughs> I'm trying here. Cam Automag, suck less. There suck we less. go. Problem solved. We're trying. <laughs> Cam Automag, we're he's trying. trying. There we go. Um, uh, 
But yeah, no, we've got some fun stuff coming up for the podcast now. Like we have more room to do stuff, so you know, right? Yeah. So we'll 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 we'll, we'll be playing with this, you know. So there we go. Uh, that that big news out of the way. Um, hey, so where can I get a nice warm beanie? I mean. There are a lot of places you can go get one, but you know the only place you can get one with a pom pom and the cam logo embroidered on it is camautoswag.com. dot com. That's all I want in my life is some cam. There you go. Good, well, good. You need to go to camautoswag dot com to get your cam auto swag. Yep. Self explanatory, right? It's right there in the damn title. It's. I mean, we did it for a reason. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm a little bit thicker in all dimensions. Well, good news for you. Some of the stuff is uh, thick with four C's. Some of this stuff goes up to 4X. Yeah, exactly. So if you are the uh, more voluptuous type. If you are, like, the comfiest of comfy boys. Yes. Or girls. There's a lot to grab on, too. It's true. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. We cater to all of you. Um, We've got, you know, our tote bags. We've got the cell phone cases. We've got the beanies with and without the pom-poms. Yeah. Pro tip, buy the one with the pom-pom. You can get it in two-tone. Yep. I, I was hearing through the group, and there might be a new shirt coming out. Yeah, we're working on it. There's going to be a few things coming out. Right. You could still get the uh, the Cam Mount Cammore t-shirt. Mount Cammore version 1. Right, exactly. A 2.0 is going to be on its way as well. Oh, yeah. Is that uh, photo going to be used in 2.0? I mean, we're gonna, I'll probably take another picture of you for 2.0. Oh. We'll so. figure it out. Anywho. <gasps> Can we get a photo of everybody dabbing and then put them on Mount Cammore? Absolutely not. So... <laughs> For everything else that doesn't suck, you can go get it at camautoswag.com, and that directly supports us. Yep. I'm, I'm, I will give you... What? I, I'm going to make a design. Okay, good. I'm, I'm going to forcefully Photoshop your bodies onto... Heads onto dabbing bodies. Okay. I'll make it. I'll make the art. I'll give you the art. <laughs> All right. I'll license it to you. Okay, thank you. We appreciate it. It will happen. Okay. Well. Thanks for the clip art, Colonel. <laughs> Anywho, moving on to a little bit of news. Yep, we've got uh, we've got some news to get to. Um, yeah. Um, so the uh, UAW strike is continuing on, and uh, I mean, once once you say it, it really makes sense here. Yeah. Uh, the major crux of this uh, is. Job security. Yeah, because GM, you know, $8 billion in profit, uh, just co- closed a bunch of U.S. factories and moved the stuff that was being built in them to Mexico and other places. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of looking like maybe those closed plants were going to be bargaining chips this entire time. Right. You know. <laughs> who, which is, who knows? Which is kind of a dick move, but, uh, but also... Uh, Recently, I didn't pop this on the agenda because I just read this today. Um, yeah, uh, there are. Uh, it's looking like negotiations are progressing, which is good. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, yeah, uh, I think UAW sent over their counter offer, their most recent counter offer to GM, and GM is uh, talking back. Okay, so that's good. And uh, the UAW upped its strike pay. From two hundred fifty bucks a week to two hundred seventy five dollars a week, okay, and they lifted a restriction on uh, the striking workers, so now they can go get like temp jobs, sure, you know, sure, to you know bring in some much needed cash. Because a thousand bucks a month does not do jack shit in this country. <laughs> Fuck and no. <laughs> uh, so, I make twice that a month, and I'm still paycheck to paycheck. Same here, dude. Yep. Uh, but um, yeah, so. Well, labor movement's not always pretty, but, you know, a lot of it's kind of necessary. I mean, it looks like there are motions in the correct direction. Yeah, so hopefully this thing gets resolved rather quickly because, you know, it's it's not fun for either side. Right. Although it's one of those, like, it's not like a strike in a professional sport where you have billionaires, you know, like, locking out millionaires. Right. It's yeah, you have right. a billion-dollar company locking out people who've put in, like, 30 years of work. Right. You know? Right. Little... And the the time means something. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like you have guys going in to work. You, like, start at a factory at, you like, fresh out of high school. Right. And then they're coming out, you know, like, our age, Dave, you know, having to do, like, physical therapy because, like, their bodies have deteriorated that much because it is a very physically demanding job. Oh, sure, sure. You know? Lots of repetition, lots of lifting, lots of motion. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's just one of those things. It's like, hey, man. 
it's a hard job, but I want to be able to, you know, keep going back there. And also, I kind of want you to take care of me because I am literally giving my body to this. Right. So, you know. Anyway, moving on into something that is also not terribly shocking when you say it out loud. <laughs> I don't know why people are expecting anything to to have this option anymore. It's I don't understand <sighs> where people's heads are at on this. But they're out there. Hit us with the sauce. Uh, yeah, the 2020 Wrangler will be coming with the diesel, but not with the manual with the diesel. Right. Yeah, so... Uh, no manual option with the upcoming diesel Wrangler. However, the car, the truck is going to cost six grand more than a manual gasser version. Four grand for the diesel engine, and then two grand that you have to spend to get the eight-speed auto behind right. it. Right, it's the box that automatically checks when you click the the green handle. Yep. So, um, it will also only be available in the four door. Yep. Because of the uh, larger fuel tank and extra diesel equipment. Yep, they couldn't cram that in the two-door chassis. Right. Keep in mind that with these diesels, we have urea injection, a DPF, you know, all all of the standard emissions fare, and we're trying to spoon this into a short wheelbase SUV. Yeah. So keep in mind, it's not going to work that well, which is why the extended wheelbase is definitely going to be in its favor. Oh, yes. And uh, for those curious... That uh, that diesel is going to be making 260 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque. Which is great. Oh, yeah. That is going to make these things climb so nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, I believe it is a slightly modified or slightly, uh, I guess, slightly changed for application version of the eco diesel that is currently in the Ram. Yeah, I think so. And so, so uh, those numbers are equivalent to the current RAM with the Eco Diesel. So you're not gaining or losing any performance. You're just putting all that goodness into a different, you know, ostensibly topless shell. Yeah. And so it's great. Yeah. I mean, Jeep stuff. And then also in this Jalopnik article that is referencing an Autoblog article, um, you can option a 2020 Wrangler nearly up to 60 grand. Jesus. Yeah. I mean that does not surprise me, and yeah, I don't think they're going to neuter their market niche that much with that because of how much people already spend on a full options Rubicon. Oh yeah, and then the fact that they just roll another twenty grand worth of modifications into the loan. Yeah, like that's this... pretty normal, at least here in Utah, where these things are everywhere. Oh yeah, there are so many companies that build parts for these things that are centered either you know in this state or adjacent, and as a result, we get a lot of them. And so I don't really see that being out of the ballpark. Yeah, like that was one of those like when I first read it, I'm just like, holy shit! And then it's just like, no, like. It... 60k is a mid-model pickup now yeah like that's that's kind of like the realization i had i'm just like yeah no that's actually not weird if anything that's like it it may be a bargain i i don't know what the 2020 ram eco diesel is going to be priced at but i don't believe you can get the rebel off-road package with the eco diesel you might i'm not sure but who knows what boxes you have to check to get that to happen who knows and uh no one thing i'd noticed that the article didn't say and i'm curious about is uh, will we be able to get a diesel Rubicon? I don't know. Because I would love to see that with, you know, a little bit lower gears, the locker options, the electric sway bar disconnects, that kind of thing. I I really think that it would be worth the buy-in. Yeah, I think that would be a pretty sweet little rig. I mean, other Wranglers aren't worth shit compared to a Rubicon because people have placed this inflated value on rubies. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you might as well do that and put the diesel and get all the extra options on it if it's something you're going to keep or something you want to get a majority of your investment out of. Oh, boy. Well, speaking of other expensive things, (laughs) here's the most expensive new Subaru ever. Yeah, so... This offends me. Yeah, so... (laughs) This offends you as somebody with, like, a $400 Subaru. So, the... (laughs) I'd, I'd offer for seven fifty on it. <laughs> uh, it. STI has now or is now able to offer this vehicle in North America. Uh, it is the STI 
S209. Ooh. So, as you guys know, a couple of years ago, the... We're only uh, getting, what, like 101 of these or some shit? No, like we're, we're getting, I think, around 200 of this. Um, 200 of, of the, the, the 209? I don't think that's right. Yeah. So, I, we should be getting 209, 209s. Uh, I, I, <clears throat> I thought that was 209s for all world market. Mm, because, because I, I when, when, don't... When we talked about 128 will be... World Rally Blue... 81 will be crystal white. <clears throat> right. That's not a lot of cars to sell here in the U.S. I it, definitely don't see that as being all of Well, because when we first talked about this, I, I <clears throat> believed it was it was uh, that, that was for the whole uh, uh, all markets, and it sounded like we were getting quite a few here. Uh, there's no specification in the article that says that this is worldwide numbers. There's nothing that specifies that we are getting a set amount of them. Um, so I'm led to believe that this is these are 209 S209s for the U.S. market. Uh, and for those of you not in the know, that uh, is a 341 horsepower, 330 pound foot uh, power plant. So a little, a little bit more warmed over. Uh, there are some aerodynamic advantages. There are drivetrain upgrades, uh, braking upgrades, and suspension upgrades as well. Um, a couple of years ago, you guys know that the uh, the STI Type RA oh, yes. kind of slapped some people in the mouth with the uh, $50,000 price tag. Mm -hmm. And people were wondering why anybody would spend fifty grand on an STI, much less a Type RA, which really wasn't much of an upgrade over the STI. No, it was like well, badges, it was though. more of a special edition commemorative type thing. Yeah, like it was like back in the day like a type RA meant something. Right, and now it's it's a appearance package essentially. Pretty much. Uh the S209 is not an appearance package. It is definitely a performance handling and you know, a power package. Um which is apparently it's it's a really grippy car. I would like to see a price comparison versus a uh, like a a base STI. And have the mods done to it to see how much that would be compared to this. Well, uh, the STI starts at just a hair over twenty five thousand dollars less than the S two hundred nine. So collector value aside, you could buy a brand new mid model or base model STI, and you'd have twenty a uh, twenty five thousand dollar check to play with uh, in order to get it to or beyond this performance level, which should be relatively easy to achieve. Yeah, like so if you're going off of yeah. pure performance, this is not the car to get. Engine looks like it's just being, it's just a tune on the engine. All right, it should just be a tune and a couple other minor tweaks. Uh, let's see, the S209 keeps the Type RA's 2.5 liter boxer flat four-cylinder engine, but adds a larger HKS turbocharger, boosting power from 310 horsepower in the RA up to 341 and 330 pound-feet of torque in oh. the S209 with a claim top speed of 162 miles an hour. So I right. was wrong. Yep. And then, uh, yes, 209 models will be built exclusively for the U.S. market. Oh, okay, yeah. So, anywho, uh, again, as said before, 81 of these cars will be uh, crystal white pearl with matte gold wheels, and the remaining 128 are going to be World Rally Blue with matte gray wheels. Yeah. I know I want to see a blue one with uh, gold wheels. I'm actually surprised that they would not offer that. Yeah, yeah that's a I weird felt, move. I felt like the the white car would have been better with the, the gray wheels, and the yeah. blue car would have been better it, it, with the gold wheels. A bit it, more of a blue Subaru rally you see has, that, has those wheels. Well, sure. I mean, that was the color scheme for Subaru in their prime. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm... I'm Curious of the move, but uh, yeah, I don't know. So we'll we'll see. Um, but yeah, at uh, God, on sixty some odd thousand dollars, that's a that's a price. That's a move. You buy a lot of car for sixty grand. Man, that's a move. Oh yeah. Um, I don't think they're going to have any trouble selling them. Oh, but, absolutely not. Right. Um, and in other news, to go ahead and tie up the news, and uh, nobody's surprised about this. No. Uh, I completely forgot this was actually happening. Yeah. Uh, bagless vacuum cleaner designer and manufacturer Dyson, uh, headed by Mr. James Dyson. Uh, a weird man he is. Have you looked into him? He's an interesting fella. An interesting fella for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of you may know, most of you probably don't know. There so was I an loved, electric car project. I loved this photo. This <laughs> Photoshop the, here. The, the that's, rendering uh, from um, uh, Dilopnik. Yeah, yeah it's, from it's Torch. A, it's a Tesla with a whole bunch of Dyson vacuum equipment strapped to it. Um, 
But yeah, so there was going to be a radical electric car introduced in 2020, and then they kind of push it off to 2021, and and now James Dyson is just saying it's it's just not going to happen. The, the money's just not there, and nobody's surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it was an it was an ambitious project to start. Yeah, like it's it's a very it's a tough hill to climb from vacuum cleaners to that. Right, and the biggest. Uh, the biggest hurdle was that Dyson was trying to develop solid state batteries. And that's not something that's currently, you know, easily doable in this market. Yeah. Like that's, that's a thing that like it, it exists, but not in any sort of like well, feasible manner for this. Battery would basically just be a capacitor. It would right. Just, it would just be yeah. a capacitor, power, which, which has been theorized could be very, because a capacitor battery would basically, it's, it's just you could have a higher voltage and higher amperage that you can then slowly drain out, and it charges a lot faster too. That's that is crazy. So, but there there's a lot of issues with that because figuring out a way to store all that voltage <laughs> becomes it issued. Right. Yeah. So, anywho, um, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. So uh, stick to vacuums, Mister Dyson, and hand cleaners. And yep. hand cleaners. Or hand yep. There was one thing that was on here which I was going to send to you, but I totally forgot. Um, the oh, fuck, what is it called? The Bloodhound thing. Oh, the Bloodhound uh, supersonic car. Yeah, it has a that, new. Owner. Yeah, it got a new lease on life. Oh, has it? Yeah. Oh, do I, tell. I'm not sure whom, but I just saw it kind of in passing. Yeah, same so exactly. Somebody, yeah. yeah. So like somebody because because uh, last thing we said about it, it was it was everything was going up for sale, just like uh, yeah, like a racing right, team. I, I do recall that. Yeah, yes. the funding ran out. They couldn't continue on, so they had to pay bills. So they had to put everything up for sale, and uh, I believe somebody bought all of that stuff, and it's just like no, 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 no. We're doing this. My understanding though is it's underneath a new name though. It has a new yeah. Yeah. Although I, they, I did see a picture of it like with the new owners, but it still had like all the old stuff on it. Because the article I saw was um, the uh, Bloodhound is not dead yet. Where it has has uh, continues with a new name, and I was like, cool. I'll click on that later, and then never saw it again. So, <laughs> right. So if if you guys know anything about that. Yeah, please uh, let us know. Yeah, mailback at camautomag dot com, or you know, hit us up in PMs. There we go. Um, but yeah, that's it's history. Yeah, that's like, that's, that's really land speed history, but recent history uh, still. But yeah, like it's... history nonetheless, and I feel like that should be preserved if it's not expounded upon. Yeah, no, I mean they. Yeah, I'm I'm glad to hear that somebody's actually doing something with it. That's really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Go. Um. Hey guys, we got some racing news. Yes, but, we do. But first, we need to uh, give a shout out and a thanks and a, a, a little little highlight to uh, our only sponsor, mm-hmm. Steady Broke Clothing. They are steady broke on all the social medias. Uh, head over to steadybroke dot com. Check out all the wonderful, comfy, high quality gear they've got. Um, I love my Depresso shirt. Uh, I think Trent's got the the sweatshirt. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> um, we've all got shirts. I think uh, yeah. that they've got awesome hats. Uh, there's really so much good stuff on SteadyBroke dot com. So scroll through the catalog, put a bunch of stuff in the cart, and uh, if you weren't already impressed with the low pricing of everything that is there in your cart, um, we've got a little surprise for you. If you type in Cam Auto fifteen into the coupon code box at checkout. That gives you an additional 15% off the entire order. So you can save yourself a little bit more money, stay a little bit less broke. There we go. Just because you're broke doesn't mean you can't live your dreams. Steady broke clothing. All right. We have quite a bit of racing that happened over this weekend. Right. Yes, including some stuff that I didn't quite fully get to write up. That is okay. But whatever. We'll get to that in a minute. You're going to shoot from the hip on it anyway. Yep. Uh, So we had uh, the Japanese Grand Prix, which was... In fear of being canceled because a typhoon was hitting Japan. Right, and this was a big one, too. Yeah, it so. was just before, like, uh, the FIA, the uh, the racetrack and the race promoter all agreed that, hey, Saturday's track activities, like, in their entirety are going to be canceled. Nobody will be at the circuit because we don't want anybody to get hurt. So, yeah. and then, like... I think on Friday, the typhoon was downgraded from a super typhoon to just a typhoon. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and uh, the storm track late, much later in the day shifted, so it was going to be making landfall further up the coast. 
Mm-hmm. So the track was no longer in the direct path, but... In peril. Mm-hmm. But still, it was one of those, um, people were complaining, it's like, oh, well, it's just kind of wet out there. <laughs> well, here's the problem. A lot of the uh, Shinkansen bullet trains had been canceled. Like, you know, they suspended running those. Uh, right. It was looking to make landfall near Tokyo, and a lot of people who came in for the race were staying in Tokyo. So that became an issue as well. Yeah, like the last thing the FIA, the track, and the race promoter want are people getting hurt on their way to the track. Yeah. So Right, it's 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 just not worth that type of yeah. issue. Yeah, no. So uh you know, they canceled Saturday stuff, so there were a lot of uh FIFA tournaments going on between uh the drivers. <laughs> Max Verstappen brought his PlayStation and they were playing FIFA. Uh, let's like see. you do. Yeah, Robert Kubica was playing uh, ping pong with somebody, another driver, I can't remember who. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I'm sure YouTube will surface this shortly. Oh, yeah, and uh, Romain Grosjean, was he bought a model of the Tyrrell six-wheeled F1 car oh. <laughs> and built it and stickered it up, and he's just like, yeah, I didn't have my cement or my paints, but I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And it's, it did look really damn good. It's weird hearing, like, People who are basically just like superhuman to us, like just being like, I did something that's like normal. Yeah. I I play video games. Well, yeah. Lando Norris is like a stream. Like is he does he really? like a regular stream. What? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. There was a uh, God. I th- fucking awesome. Yeah. After I can't remember which race it was, but like his car, like he was in six. There was nobody around him, and his car just cut out, and he was like freaking out on the radio. So somebody got on his, tr- or somebody else on another stream trolled Max super hard. Uh, he, he was playing, um, I think it was PUBG or, mm-hmm. you know, Fortnite or something. And like he was in a car and he was just like swerving it around. He's just like, no, the car's dead. There's no power. There's no. And, and somebody snipped that clip and sent it to Lando. And Lando's just like burying his head, but dying laughing because he realized how hilarious it was. Of course. Like, awesome. Lando is what we need. Well, they're, they're like real people and they have like feelings like we do. Yeah. Right. Um, anyway, so with everything on Saturday canceled, that meant that on uh, Sunday, race day, they were going to be qualifying in the morning and then racing that afternoon. One day race. Yep. I mean, it's just like how us uh, low-level folks do it. <laughs> Qualify and race all on the same damn day. Um, yeah, this kind of proved very weird and interesting because the rubber washed away, or the rain washed away a lot of the rubber, so the track was kind of very different like a clean yeah so you know people were trying to figure out what the hell was going on right when you get rid of the groove everything's just a slippery slidey mess yeah, yep you, you have to run new race lines and figure out where you want to place the car yep uh so uh ferrari locked out the front row with uh mercedes right behind them and uh, i just, normally do i just want to point this out Merce- nobody has won at suzuka from the second row so okay on the start uh it appeared uh, Sebastian Vettel jumped the start. Oh, no. Although, kind of like what Kimmy did uh, the prior race weekend, where, you know, he thought the lights were going to go out, so he let off the clutch and rolled forward enough out of his grid spot. Oh, no. But then stopped, and so he got hit with a penalty. Um, but Seb, like, didn't roll that much. Like, he, it was noticeable if you were watching, but the FIA, like, nothing popped up in race control saying that he moved. <laughs> Interesting. It didn't matter because he immediately got passed. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Ouch. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, Valtteri Bottas took the lead, and, uh, in turn two, Charles and Max Verstappen had coming together. Um, yeah, Charles had all the air taken off the front of his car, so he understeered right to the side of Max. Yeah, that wasn't a pretty sight. was not great. Uh, Max ended up retiring several laps later, but um, for a while, Charles was out there running around with his front wing just shedding bits of itself. Just like spraying people behind it was, him. Yeah, it was, it was just carbon confetti going on yeah. down, that, down that road. And Ferrari is telling him that you need to come in because the FIA is saying he needs to come in. He needs to come in because this is very dangerous. Um, in, I like carbon in my face. In racing, there is a flag called the meatball. It is a black flag with a big orange circle in it. Okay. When you get shown the meatball, 
that is because there is an obvious mechanical issue with your car and you are ignoring it. <laughs> so the track is telling you, like, the race officials are telling you to get the fuck off the track and get this remedied. Okay, right. so I just learned now is I want a meatball sticker for all of my vehicles. Okay, we can get you a meatball. Okay. But I feel like that needs to be a t-shirt. I want the meatball. Yeah. Show me the meatball. Hit me with that meatball. We can do this. All right. Um, but yeah, so they didn't show him the meatball, but they were very close. Mm. Yes, yeah, like, so they they pulled it out of the holder. Yeah. I'm sure they haven't used that one in a hot minute. Blow so. the dust off of this. Yeah, just, all right. Well, we're going to unroll Old Faithful here in a second of this guy. Just get this thing off the road. What's this on here? Mondale 84. God damn. What was I thinking? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I've... I've had wine from about that era. Ah, mm. uh, Thunderbird. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and how. <laughs> and how. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Alex Albon uh, made a very ambitious pass mm-hmm. on Lando Norris going into the final chicane. And by ambitious, I mean something we've all done in a Forza or like Gran Turismo online race before. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just using the other guy to make that turn. Uh, I mean, you know, eight tires have more traction than four. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that car's going to move a hell of a lot more than a wall will. You're right. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, at one point, uh, Lewis radioed in and wanted to know some stuff. I wanted to know how far uh, Valtteri was ahead of him. Valtteri was nearly an entire pit stop ahead of him. Mm-hmm. This came as a surprise to Lewis, <laughs> who was none too thrilled about this. And his engineers kept saying, yeah, man, the degradation was a lot more than we thought, so, you know. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, the, the your uh, top three ended up being Valtteri Botas, who won at Suzuka from the second row. Wow. Yeah. Followed by Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. Uh, they s- brought in Lewis uh, late in the race to put on the softer compound tire so uh-huh. he could go out there and get the fast lap point. Right. And, uh, yeah, Mercedes wrapped up their sixth consecutive Constructors' Championship okay. by one, one point. point. All right. Yep. That was a uh, very strategic move. Though. Oh, yeah. Uh, something that, you know, the average plebeian masses would not consider. Oh, no. So. Actually, something I didn't think about until you guys were mentioning it. <laughs> Uh, it was one of those things when they announced it, I think me and a few other people were like, this is going to come and play. Like, this is going to be a thing. Right. So, uh, I was really hoping it was going to decide something by, like, one point. Like, somebody was going to go out there just fucking mad ass. Because the other thing about that point is you have to finish in the top ten. Yes. So, I'm imagining some lunatic just going out there just f- doing a flyer just to finish 10th and getting that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Just, just like that. Just go do me a quality lap. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> just uh, just put, pop these super softs on and give her a rip, bud. <laughs> give me the ultra soft. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, uh, that was not the only bit of racing happening on that side of the globe. In a crazy upside down America Jr., we had the Bathurst 1000. Ah, yes. Yes. I love seeing things from Mount Panorama. Uh, it's a great race, something that I did not watch nearly enough of. Mm, yeah, but, I, I was unable to catch it. Yeah, I caught a bit of it on the Motor Trend On Demand thing. Right. But, um, you know, not as much as I would have liked. So, um, Scott McLaughlin and Alex Primat won with uh, their DJR Team Penske Mustang. Oh, okay. Yeah, one of those gorgeous uh, red and white shell liveried cars. Yeah, nice, How- nice looking cars. Yep. Uh, however, the race results are still provisional, and I will get to that in a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Earmark that. Yep, just put a pin in there. We're coming back to it. Right. Um, It was, so the race is 161 laps. That's how sure. you get to 1,000 kilometers at Bathurst. Right. Or Mount Panorama. And so the first 100 laps, pretty mellow. Yeah? Not a lot of safety car action. Oh, how many? One. No shit. Yeah, like, it was super fucking mellow. So that's just everybody working into the groove, getting their getting their heads down and into the work? and Yeah, nobody doing anything catastrophically dumb. You that know? seems, ironically, un-Australian. It really... I, I did like the, um, the thing you showed us. 
where oh. all the clips were from the last third of the race. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> for, apparently, so I stopped watching at like lap 100. And that's where it all went down, though, isn't it? Uh, starting at lap 135, that's when shit hit the fan and suddenly it was like a safety car every other lap. Got it. Because people were just getting too rowdy. They're they're just trying to make it happen. Yeah, everybody's, you know, getting real ambitious. Um, yeah, when I stopped watching, they're just like, yeah, man, this could break the six-hour mark for the race. Huh. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so for the final safety car, you had, you know, Scott McLaughlin up there in the lead. And then further back in the pack, you know, kind of in the meaty part where some of the other challengers were, right? you know, you had at the lead of that Fabian Coulthard, mm-hmm. one of the other DJR Team Penske Mustangs. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So Supercar Series is cool with, like, team orders, you know, like, let him buy, he's got the pace, whatever. They're right. cool with that crap. Right. They're not cool with, hey, man, maybe ride the brake down the hill. Nobody's going to be able to get around you because those yellow flags are out. Ooh. Yes, so they oh, are. Oh, dirty. Yep, so the Australian Motorsports Council is investigating this. The results will not change. Like, I want to make that very clear. Scott McLaughlin and Alex Primet have, have won this race. It's not going to be taken away from them. But penalties may be levied against the uh, guilty parties. Oh, boy, howdy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, DJR Team Penske might get fucked in the wallet. Well, you know. I mean, maybe that uh, maybe that particular Bathurst win was worth it. Hey, I mean, you listen, know, I mean, we don't know. I mean, it has been a particularly dominant year for the Mustang. So, I mean, this is what the second year they've run the Mustang, something like that. But I mean, it's been crazy, like how good that damned car has been this year. Yes, for so. something that did not originally come in upside down land, it has been clean in house. For something that they have had to adapt to the current like safety shell, which was based around a sedan. I, I mean, let's let's be honest. This is literally what is it the. Uh, What's the car? What's the, the car? Help me out here. Yeah, thank you. The yeah. Falcon. This is literally a Falcon that looks like a Mustang. <laughs> yeah, like it looks it it looks like a Mustang, but also not like a Mustang at all. No, it's like kind of weird. Yeah, it's like it's a. It's it, here's the thing. If Ford built a Mustang sedan, I would prefer it look like this car. Yeah, this. I mean, it's not a bad looking car no. for sure. It's just it looks. Off, it, it, it's definitely it looks, in the uncanny well, if, valley of Mustang. If, yeah. if, if you <laughs> see that's a, the best way to describe, yeah, it. if you see the picture or a picture of a Falcon, and you put one finger over the trunk, one finger over the nose, and squint, it's the Mustang. Yeah, uh, this is all going to be for naught because I believe next year they're going to be officially allowing uh, two doors in. Oh, so it's going to be Camaro and Mustang. Okay. Yep. Well then. So, yeah. So that's going to be a thing. All right. Well, I mean, let's see what happens. Yeah. I'm I'm interested, actually. Yeah. I would love to see what this would be, you know, with some uh, some different coupe chassis. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. And then uh finally, we had uh the finale of the IMSA season, Petit Le Mans. Yes. Which was the send-off for the Factory 4 GT effort. Okay. Those cars are going to wind up in the hands of privateers next year. Ah. Yeah, so you will still see Ford GTs, just, you know, not the Chip Ganassi backed Ford GTs, and also the Corvette C7R. Mm. This was it for it, because uh, at the Roar... Coming up in January, you're going to be seeing the mid-engine five and a half liter V8 powered C8R. Right. Yep. Now so. we don't have too many crazy details on this five five. Uh, yeah, but we know it has to be a five five to meet with the homologation standards. Right, and I so. believe it is going to have more than one cam. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean it's, you know, it's still going to be a flappy paddle gearbox, but it is going to be a specially developed one for the Corvette. So right. Yep. So there we go. Um, uh, let's see. I do know Mike Shank Racing uh, uh-huh. running the Acura NSXs in the GTD category. All they had to do was start the race, and they That's clinched it. the title. And so they started the race, and they clinched the title. Okay. Yep. 
Well, that was easy. Oh, yes. So, let's see. In the top category, in the DPIs, uh, there was there was some interesting scenarios at play that could have taken the win away, or taken the championship away from the Penske Acuras. Oh, really? Yes. So, uh, the number six car, I believe, was in the lead for the championship. Okay. So, it needed to finish... Like, it just needed to finish, I think, sixth or better, or eighth or better. All right. And it was going to secure the win. Simple enough. <clears throat> yeah. But uh, the Whelan Corvette, or no, the Whelan Cadillac, um, it could have very easily won the championship if it won, and the Penske finished sixth or worse. Okay. So, yeah, so they're like, yeah, we're here to fucking win, and... Their car really seemed like it was there to fucking win because they brought it off the hauler and like all the testing that week, right? And qualifying, like they didn't do much with it. They just pulled it off the hauler and just set it on its way. And it's just like tight. This thing kicks ass. Huh. Don't change a thing. Right. Yep. Uh, let's see. In uh, GTLM, we had the lone. Ferrari, the Risi Competizione Ferrari, right, showing up <laughs> just to spoil everything, pretty much, because that's again, it's one of those Ferrari doesn't do sports car racing; they only do Formula One. So this Risi thing is not a factory backed effort, but also a very much so a factory backed effort. It's weird, right? I don't get it. Ferrari just fucking lean into it. <laughs> it's God, definitely, it's definitely yes. a wink, wink, nudge, nudge situation. Yeah, stop it. Just get into it, okay? For the love of fucking God. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they qualified really well, and they ended up winning the race. So that was nice. They brought right. home the, I believe they, yeah, they brought home the uh, the championship in class. So, yeah, not ideal for, uh, <laughs> I saw a scenario for one of the Corvettes to win. It really involved somebody not starting the race. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, when you're banking on not all the horses leaving the stable. <laughs> it wasn't even just like, oh, this one car doesn't start the race. It was, this car doesn't start the race? Oh, and this other car has to finish, like, sixth or worse. This is a really niche expectation. <laughs> like, you're really fucking with the math, man. I mean... I appreciate it, but at the same time, maybe just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, we yep. Uh, there was some hot fucking action at the end, like at night in GTD. It was uh, the Turner. Let's see. Yeah, it was a Turner M6. Uh, going up against the uh Riley that wins liveried AMG GT3. Okay, and that AMG just like it had all the power it needed to pull away from the BMW. But unsurprising. Yes. However, all that power comes with one problem. Oh boy. You need a lot of gas. Yeah, fuel consumption is a bit of an issue. Yep. And uh guess who ran out of gas uh, on the last lap? Ah uh, Yeah. So, well Yep, so uh Bill Oberlin tied an IMSA record with sixty wins. Wow. Yeah. So, Impressive. Shout out to Bill Oberlin. Yeah. So any anybody doing doing some uh racing record breaking or record tying in this case named Bill. Oh yeah. Good on you, bud. Oh yeah. So there we go. That is Petit Lamar. And uh yeah, there we go, folks. I mean I that's a, that's our episode. Yeah. I had a quick one if you want me to tell Okay, tell your quick hit us with that quick story. Get, get the five minute or less version. So oh it's it's short. Okay. So Jackson's an asshole. Great there, story. End story. Yeah, cool. End story. <laughs> Fade to black. So <laughs> we'll be back on we, Thursday. <laughs> we all know <laughs> Oh man. So we all know like the generic Tesla douche, right? We've all seen that guy. Give us a give, sorry. Give us a quick rundown. Oh, he 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 lives in Draper. I don't even know how to describe. It, but you've seen like generic douchebags that drive Tesla, like right? like the like the P eighty D douche. Yeah, yeah. He's got some plucky vanity plate that says something about lol oil. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. So 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 Jackson sees one of these dudes. Uh, this was a week a week ago or two weeks ago. At the at the Bionet because he does 
plasma, whatever, fuck, whatever. Sure. And he sees this guy using his smart summon to pull oh, his God. car out of a spot. And Jackson realized every time he got kind of close to it, it would stop and he'd see him, see the guy type his phone a bunch of times to get going again. So he was, he was kind of like, well, fucking with it, just trying to get a little kind of close to it. And he was like, okay, hey, he left it. So the next time he goes to um, the, the biomat, he sees the same blue, I think, I think it was like a P90 or something like that. Uh-huh. And he fits around his pockets. He finds a diamond of some chapstick. Oh, boy. He chapsticks up the dime and sticks it on the sensor. Oh, God. And just fucking walks away. Oh, fuck. Just fucking walks away. And he calls me and goes, Zach, 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 I'm a fucking asshole. <laughs> and the best part of the story, too, is I, te- I tell this to Tesla, Will. And uh, he's like, God damn, that's fucking savage because he wouldn't know what's going on. Like, <laughs> it's, it's not going to throw a code saying, there's a dime on my sensor. It's because it's either just going to fail out a sensor or just not work. Right. It's <laughs> like, it's just going to say, you know, oh, this limit has been exceeded. Yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 wouldn't, it wouldn't even th- it wouldn't let you do, uh, like, it would throw codes because a, a lot of, like, the like the smart driving features are going to be disabled, like, all, like, the um, autopilot and all of, like, the, like, pedestrian safety <laughs> and the, 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 the automated stopping systems are all going to be failed. Oh, God. Oh, because of a piece of fucking a dime and some chapstick. Yeah, a piece of piece of change and a dollar tube of chapstick. Yeah. Jesus. I, I imagine what you could do with, with two pieces of gum. You could fuck that car over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> fucking hell, man. So, yeah, so uh, Jackson's an asshole. Ooh. Jackson is an absolute asshole, but hats off to you for actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, man. He calls We've... me, and I'm at Chick-fil-A, and I'm trying not to start just like being like, just start laughing my ass off in the middle of Chick-fil-A. It was pretty good. Nice. Bam. Well, there that's, we go. That's awesome. Brilliant. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us on this episode. Um, yeah, again, I just want to thank everybody who uh, read the story and reached out to me. That means a lot. And uh, just to reiterate, uh, next week... Don't. Don't. That's, like, creepy reaching out. That's, I mean, that's not the one you want to do. It's not. <laughs> just, Just stop. So, guys, we are changing up the format a little bit. We are going back to one episode a week. But one longer episode a week. Right, exactly. We're going to stretch it out a little bit more. We're going to, yeah. try and, going to try and fill it with some decent content. You know, th- this is in the interest of keeping this fun and entertaining for everybody. Yeah. Uh, the two-episode thing is a little much. It's kind of burning me way the fuck out. Right, right? and we don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, so... We want to keep this, you know, for everybody. Yeah. You know, everybody that's involved needs to have their their level of comfort, you know. Yeah. So um, we're changing it up a little bit. Um, starting next week, we're going to be out on Wednesdays. Yep. Um, those of you who are Patreon subscribers. You're still going to get the episode early. You're just going to get it on Tuesday. Right. Exactly. So. And, uh, you know, it still stands uh, once we get Patreon uh to our vague and ever-changing goal. Right. I mean, we said 200, then we said, let's get close to 200. <laughs> now we're like, hey, you know what, fuck it, let's round up to the next five. <laughs> Give me two more bucks, and we're, we'll call it good. Exactly. I'm about ready to fucking just put it in for a dollar at this point. There you go. I mean, if you're going to do it for a dollar, do it for five, because then you at least get into the Cam Shenanigans page. You, know, you guys all know this. Uh, so... <laughs> Zach's already in there. Yeah, so I was say you preach to the choir here, but don't don't make that be your final decision of whether or not you. Hey, I don't talk Patreon. very often. Zach's in there, but me and Dave are in there. Right, exactly. There's a there's a lot of good people. A lot of yeah, a lot of good. <laughs> you... A lot of good people on both sides. You're right. Moving Thanks, on, Dave. Yeah, love you too. So, <laughs> but yeah, so we're changing it up. Uh, if you guys have suggestions, you know, we'd, yeah. we'd love to hear them, uh, e- even if they may not work for us. We still want to know where you're at. Yeah, like, let us, to listen. yeah, like, let us know what you think, because, like... Well, we we ultimately do this for you guys. Yeah, like, we would... The reason that there's this giant-ass table... Well, okay, there's a couple reasons there's this giant-ass table. This is going to be fun for some tabletop gaming. Absolutely. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, like, we would just be hanging out just having these conversations without microphones. Right. But because you people seem to enjoy them... You seem to enjoy us for some reason. Yeah. I don't know so, why. 
baffling, but whatever. We're not going to try to think too hard about this one. I'm not questioning it. Yeah, that's why we have microphones here, and that's why I'm paying for hosting for the podcast and right, you know, exactly. putting it out there. So. so, I mean, there are a lot of reasons why we're doing this single. I mean, a lot of it is for us. A lot of it is yeah. for you. A lot of it is for the content. A lot of it is for scheduling. There is yeah. even a, a small portion of this that's for our hosting storage. I mean, yeah, like... We have to keep our episode short if we do multiple episodes because we only have a finite amount of monthly storage. It costs me money right. if we go over our storage. Right, and I'm sure we probably do that on a fairly regular basis. It seems like every other month we go over. Right, and we don't want to do that anymore, so we're going to try and bring them to 70 to 90 minute episodes. Yeah, which is going to be, I mean, it's you're basically getting what you're getting now, but in just one fell swoop. Right, and instead of... You know, instead of two complete dishes, we're we're boiling it down. We're we're leaning it. Yeah, we're giving you the meat and potatoes without all the extra fluffy bullshit. Exactly, and that's what we want to do for you guys. So just keep that in mind moving forward, and let us know if you've got suggestions, comments, yeah. you know, praise, complaints, what have you. Mail back at camautomag dot com. Let us know. You can also message us on the social medias. You can get to us individually if you'd like. You can go straight to the Cam Automag page. You know, we we take it all. So, yeah, and I'm just gonna throw this out there. If you have my personal social media stuff and you come to me with like complaints about the Camcast, I'm going to tell you to like direct it to the Cam stuff because I'm going to be a lot more friendly on the Cam stuff than I will be on my own. Right? Yeah. Don't complain to us. <laughs> complain yeah, to Cam asshole Automag. in person. <laughs> it's like I won't. It's like I will fucking like, but still, yeah. You know, anyway, <laughs> all aside, all aside, we're, yeah. we're really kind of glossing over the point here. Yeah, like we're getting away, we're getting, we're getting into the weeds. But uh, yeah, next week we're going to be out on Wednesday with one longer episode. It's going to be the first of many, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys like it because I think it's going to be better. We're going to be in a better headspace. Absolutely, we're going to yeah. be getting out of here at a better time. Yes. I know my girlfriend's going to be happy about that. Yes, I'm going to be going to sleep at a reasonable hour. What's reasonable hour? Uh, Before you. Not like 11.30. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, in another 10 years, you will understand what it's like to go to bed after 10 p.m. Dude, yeah, like, you're going to understand how sweet it, like, when I say I really want to go to sleep at 9.30, like, nah, man, like, I mean, I could go to fucking sleep and be dead to the world at 9.30. Right, exactly. Yep. Uh, well, anyway, let's let's go ahead and pull this thing into yeah, port. Let's boat this bass. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll be back uh, next week with uh, our first Wednesday episode in a long ass time. So uh, stick with us. We appreciate the support and love and everything. And uh, yeah, if you want to express that support and love or just tell us that we're crazy and that you're going to stop listening or, you know, whatever, just talk about the weather, uh, direct that stuff to us on the social medias. We are at Cam Automag on a lot of them. Feel free to su- follow us there if you're not already. Right. Uh, if you haven't already or if you have somebody who's just like, yeah, I want to listen to a loosely car centric podcast hosted by three lunatics in a basement. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> but I just can't seem to find the one for me. One. What other podcasts like this are there? And two, go ahead and tell your friend to uh, subscribe to us wherever they get their podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. Uh, yeah, tell us to uh, tell them to give us a rating. It really helps us and a review. Uh, kind of helps us get seen by more people, and that way we can do more fun stuff. Right. Yep. And there's the aforementioned Patreon, patreon.com slash camautomag. That's another way place where you go to help us continue creating fun stuff right uh five bucks a month is the best bang for the buck shit posting group content early access all the fun stuff that the regular people don't get to see right yep. i i know people are going to start subscribing once we actually get the live stream going oh yeah i i know that is going to be a thing so guys help us do that yeah so we're gonna do it with or without you because but we want to do it with you for you yeah that's what happened is we're gonna start pulling clips from the live stream and post those up on cam Yep. Yeah, that's right. Help us help you. So, check it out. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much all the housekeeping, yeah. right? Cam Auto Swag, uh, Steady Broke Clothing, coupon code CAMAUTO15 at SteadyBroke.com. So, you 15% off your entire order. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys. Well, let's, uh, 
Let's go ahead and get the hell out of here, huh? All right. Uh, for episode 235, I've been Mike. I've been Dave. I've been Zach. All, All right. right, guys. It's, uh, My walk is going to be cold. I'm oh, sorry. man.